Good evening, it's uh, Adil Fazal, hey market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review for the uh, trading session for Monday, the 25th of September 2017. Uh, a weekend review, you could call it, so okay, for Monday's trading session. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal Signals and market updates from leading providers at www.tradesignal.com. Uh, you can certainly download the app on the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Apologies for delaying the videos or uh, a pause in the videos, that's due, mainly due to the fact that I'm on holiday at the moment, certainly taking a break temporarily although I am still trading whilst I get the time. Okay, so in terms of market analysis, going into obviously Monday's trading session, the theme really is the German election. Everything hinges on that. We certainly got a late uh, sell-off, uh, certainly a topping tail shooting star pattern on the German DAX, which I'll certainly discuss as well, okay? Uh, looking at the stats then, let's, let's actually bring up the stats for last week, or should we say uh, Friday's session for Europe. Europe we had the FTSE up, uh, up to a breaking that 7300 barrier on the back of the uh, May post May's Florence speech certainly lacking detail, which in turn obviously caused sterling to fall, and in which in obviously inadvertently caused the uh, the actual FTSE obviously to uh, move higher. Given the fact that we already know the inverse relationship between the GBP and the FTSE at the moment, okay. In terms of the German DAX, actually finished negative, so again that's a warning sign given the uncertainty and the jittery nerves going into the uh, the weekend, uh, given the election. French CAC finished up 14 points, FTSE MIB up 39. IBEX stock 600 certainly all benefiting. In terms of US markets, we had a uh, positive close more or less in towards the end, okay, towards the end of the session in terms of US, NASDAQ closing higher, S&P as well, the Dow, gold um, certainly pushing back higher as well along with oil. Although oil certainly is in some uh, type of um, bearish scenario and I'll certainly discuss that as well. Okay, uh, nevertheless, that's the status quo. Uh, in terms of um, the... Uh, the economic data for Monday's trading session. Let's just give you an insight into that as well. Uh, going into uh, the 25th of September. Let's have a look here. Going into this week. Uh, bring up the stats. Going into Monday's session. You certainly have obviously German elections. Results we'll certainly find out there. Uh, again, expect volatility. We have economic data out from Japan. Uh, watch out for the leading economic index and the coincident index. Having said that, the Japanese yen certainly has fallen uh, quite substantially given the fact that Mr. Abe certainly is taking advantage of the election or early election and again everybody expects him to certainly win and continue with his QE policy. Nevertheless, uh, the weekly chart certainly was uh, into support on the yen and it certainly has bounced quite sharply. So again, given the fact that we have North Korean situation certainly hurting uh, uh, risk sentiment as well, although that hasn't played out in, in, in equities, whether Europe or the US. So. I take that into consideration as well. Nevertheless, as you can see here, when the yen moves higher, equity markets certainly ignore that. When the yen moves lower, the equity markets certainly seem to be uh, short squeezing higher quite substantially. So daily chart, you can see here quite a, a substantial uh, rally in the in the actual USD uh, JPY, as you can see. And again, that certainly is led by the uh, the actual fact that uh, the Fed certainly is hawkish. And we also had the Fed president, Mr. Williams, if I can recollect certainly sounding hawkish as well okay obviously with a week with miss yellen as well certainly indicating tapering too so don't be uh, focusing on the fact that the usd jpy is going higher therefore european equities are going higher it's actually risk negative let's bring up the us let's bring up the yen actually index if we have that at the moment i don't have it on this chart have i got the yen no unfortunately i don't have that at the moment let me just bring up the yen let's see if i can bring up dgxy yen i think that will be help helpful here J again. there we go okay so again this is going to be interesting whether or not mr rb is certainly baked into the cake again that certainly is a, another a question to be asked for every trader at the moment okay that's my interpretation so that's basically where we stand let me just save that as well so i don't have to go through that uh, process again save there we go we've saved it okay so yen as you can see here bullish engulfing chart uh, candle on the yen so keep an eye on the yen, given the fact that we have a weekly chart as well into support, okay? So again, from my perspective, going into this week, that really is a chart that you should really be focusing on. The yen, DJFX CM yen chart, okay? Watch out for yen support. Weekly chart, we're into support, given the fact that we have uh, the situation with regards to North Korea as well. Again, there was talk over the weekend, or going into the weekend, that they are going to try uh, a new potential um, uh, device. Uh, and again, let's see how that certainly plays out. Me one second, here we go. That certainly is better, so we can make adjustments as well. Okay, so again, keep an eye on the USD JPY looking at the four hour chart as well. Again, keep a lookout here. Okay, let's see exactly how this market plays out. 
Okay. Um, now, again, going into the technical picture, let's bring up the German DAX first and foremost, the, uh, the actual chief of European equities. Uh, looking at the weekly chart, really in no man's land from my perspective. You are into horizontal resistance, though, and we certainly held the pivot high being 12,686, to recollect, 12,66680. Six, okay, we actually hit a pivot high on Friday at uh, 12,650, 12,650 region. Okay, so again, as you can see, shooting star topping tail, you have multiple unfilled gaps left behind. As you already know, I didn't make you aware of the inverted head and shoulders formation that was active on the German DAX. And that certainly played out quite substantially well, uh, although I failed to certainly capitalise on that. Again, given the fact that Mr Draghi certainly sounded hawkish, I certainly uh, exercised caution. Nevertheless, that's the status quo. We're dealing with it now. Let's react, OK? In terms of the uh, German DAX, one could call it an expanding wedge. Again, the jury is out, OK? Uh, I am looking at this pattern, though. Keep an eye on this pattern, OK? You have the left shoulder, head, OK? You've got a flush on Friday. Let's see if we can somehow flush lower. You have the unfilled gap. Well, it's not an unfilled gap, but it's certainly, a, certainly a, an area of support given the bottoming tail, okay? Uh, let's see how we play out there. Okay, and if we do flush there, the next support is seen below around the 12.513 and then eventually ultimate gap fill at 12.475. Now, don't be surprised if that gap fills tonight. I will not be surprised at all, okay, in this market if we get a, uh, a win, win for Merkel, but not as substantial as everybody's expecting. Again, that could cause a risk off scenario. So, again, it's a wild card. Just basically um, trade accordingly. Okay. Uh, now, again, you are seeing the pivot high at 12,650. Again, uh, we could break through 12,650 and potentially even put a new high, uh, given, especially given the fact that we have an unfilled gap that's left open at 12,770. So, we could certainly gap high on the German DAX today with an overwhelming uh, successful win for uh, Angela Merkel. And, and therefore, um, one would interpret that as being obviously overtly bullish and therefore uh, the German DAX certainly could close up and at 12.770 then eventually sell off. We do, again, every scenario is possible, okay? Uh, as a trader, we just react, okay? Uh, having said that, you are looking at previous resistance equals support here, or previous resistance, sorry, here, up to 12.620, you have resistance at 12.630, and then ultimate resistance at 12.650. So they are your resistance zones on the German DAX. 12.605 12, certainly proved resistance as well. Uh, and again, watch out for potential support below if the market does obviously start to flush. That gap fill certainly held very well, and then obviously we rallied quite substantially before we gave up the gains. So that's the status quo with regards to the German DAX. In terms of the French CAC, let's bring up the French CAC. Uh, we did actually close our gap ultimately in the end at 12, 5295. Uh, again, that's certainly exhausted now. We've hit the 5280 inverted head and shoulders target now on the French CAC. And from my interpretation, it's only, only uh, anything but lower now. And again, I'm certainly biased given the fact that I'm already short of the French CAC, so I'll certainly declare that in advance. Um, but my bias certainly is bearish now, given the fact that inverted head and shoulders certainly has hit. And it's been very impressive as well. I certainly didn't expect it to, hit, uh, to be hit, especially given the fact that Mr. Macron's uh, approval rating certainly has dropped drastically and, uh, and the labour reforms certainly aren't going as well as it has expected, and especially with Mr. Draghi sounding hawkish and uh, forcing the euro over 1.2, uh, only for it to reverse in the back of Miss Yellen. So... Let's see what's happening here. Okay, again, certainly something to focus on. 60-minute chart, you can see here bearish engulfing. As soon as that gap was closed, we had quite a substantial sell-off. Uh, you have an unfilled gap left behind. You have an unfilled gap here. So it's just basically a, a city of gaps. <laughs> it's probably the best way of describing this at the moment in terms of the, the European indices. And really, it's been quite a phenomenal rally as well, which is pretty impressive, given the fact that, as you can see here, we had a pivot low of 5,000, and we've rallied ever since up to 5,300. And again, that's impressive. And like I said, that's the value of gaps left behind. And we're looking for those gaps to close. That's my my certain target, the downside. 10-minute chart. Again, we did flush, certainly indicating weakness for my interpretation. And again, your ultimate target for my well, The target for now certainly will be gap fill at 5240. So don't be surprised if you see a gap lower on the French count today. Back down to 5240, okay? Again, a mini HHS formation reversal certainly is pending here on the French CAC, okay? So in terms of the next uh, indices, I should bring up the uh, FTSE itself. FTSE, impressive rally in the back of uh, Miss May's Florence speech, certainly sending the uh, sterling lower. I'll bring up sterling for you as well. There we go. Sterling certainly pushing lower. You certainly seem to have plateaued now. Okay, let's look at the daily chart. Uh, again, let's look at the weekly chart. Okay, looking at the German on the uh, the uh, GBP USD. And really, it's, it's just, it was basically... Uh, uh, telegra telegraphing, or should we say, um, email, or should we say WhatsApp now? 
that's the current medium of uh, of, uh, of obviously communication. So basically, you were basically being WhatsApped or emailed an alert saying that the, the GBP USD is moving lower, given the fact that you're into gap fill. Okay, so you clearly see this is a top on GBP USD, and therefore you're looking for a reversal. Uh, going to the 60-minute chart, or even going to the four-hour chart, you can see that we are now into a bearish uh, potential uh, pattern now. Certain exhaustion here on the four-hour chart. Certainly, again, looking for a reversal. Uh, daily chart at the moment, again, you can clearly see a topping tail there into gap fill. Okay, so again, this this will be your topping tail. So my interpretation really will be by potentially bullish on FTSE next week, given the fact that you are a potential top on on cable, and then uh, therefore you're looking for a reversal. So. Let's see how US markets play out, and then obviously we react accordingly. 60 minute chart on the cable. You certainly have support down in this region here. We're looking for this support ready to break 1.3460 zone. Once that cracks and it opens up the next potential previous resistance equals support, you are opening up 1.33. Then we'll see how the market reacts there in terms of sterling. So, again, if sterling holds that 1.36 and you're looking to move lower, that certainly will be bullish for the FTSE. So let's see how the FTSE plays out. First of all, at 7300, 7310 resistance. If we break through there, then you are looking at the next resistance, 7380, potentially even higher. 60-minute chart, again, uh, you are seeing a potential bull flag. So we're looking for consolidation. Any retracement back to 7280 zone certainly will be a key support zone for the FTSE for the next potential thrust higher back up to 200 MA, potentially even higher. So again, watch out for that. You are into that FIB 61% and FIB 75% resistance. So again, those two zones certainly will remain resistance for the FTSE if you are looking to short. Okay, 10 minute chart, certainly from my perspective, certainly indicates a bear flag scenario. And I am looking for a flush down to 7290. That's why I'll be playing first of all. Once again, 7290, yeah, I'll exercise caution. Okay, certainly will exercise caution if you use your pivot low to pivot high. You I mean you use your trading tools, folks, okay? Uh, looking for 7290, 72, 7280, and then 72, well, down to 7280 is 75% resistance support, should I say? And then obviously you're looking at 7270 as previous previous support. Again, that's a scenario looking at higher highs and higher lows. And let's see if the FTSE certainly continues on the back of that potential top led by Miss, uh, uh, obviously led by the fumbling, uh, confused, and really for my uh, actual uh, dimwit, uh, for my, I'd call her a dimwit. I mean, Really, from the cut from the same cloth as Mr. Trump, from my understanding and interpretation, uh, the Tory party can do much, much better than her. Okay, Cameron was ten times better than her as well. Uh, she certainly hasn't got the leadership quality. She's certainly confused, and she's just a U-turn queen. So, if anything, it's negative Sterling. Okay, even though uh, we do have Mr. Carney and and Cole and and his um, his colleagues certainly attempting to talk the uh, rate hike and obviously uh, talk Sterling higher, given the fact that we have a concern, well, a prob real problem with inflation or. Uh, inflation picking up at the moment and evading wage growth. Okay, again, that's another theory altogether, another another story altogether. And I'm not going to delve into that. Okay, so neither way, look, keep look, keep an eye on sterling number one, and obviously keep watch out for support of 72 90. And let's see how the German election certainly evolves, and let's see what the results are. And let's see how the uh, how overwhelming Miss Merkel's obviously election victory is, which again obviously paints uh, a picture for eurozone. Uh, overall okay i think that's a really good summation it's a very long video by the way apologies it's 30 minutes too long okay so i'm going to call it a day here i'll call it an evening and i wish you uh, the a successful trading week please be sure to visit cfds.com especially uh, to trading and certainly take advantage of the uh, certain bonus and again trade signal download the latest app and uh, you can certainly see my updates on there goodbye now